Hi guys, I'm Taylor. I'm an extension agent intern this summer here with Cass County and today we're going to be cooking grilled peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, mini pizzas, and pretzels. First, let's start with preheating the oven. On this oven, we start by hitting bake using the plus or minus to change the temperature. So we're going to go all the way up to 425 degrees and then you just simply hit start. Alrighty guys, the next step after we've cleaned our hands and cleaned our counter space is to measure the water. Measuring water is really important and to make sure that we get the correct amount, once we think we have as much as we need, we need to make sure and double check the water at eye level. So once I pour my cup and a half of water into my measuring cup, it looks about like a cup and a half, you come down to eye level and check it out. See, I'm a little bit short, so we're just going to need a little more. And then we put the water in the microwave for about 30 to 45 seconds and then we test it to see if it's hot enough to activate the yeast. If it's too hot, the water will kill the yeast and the dough won't rise. But if it's not hot enough, the yeast won't activate. So it's important, a good test to do is to be able to stick your finger just a little bit in the water and if it's warm enough where it feels warm, it's good to go. But if it's too hot to keep your finger in, the water is too hot and it's going to kill the yeast. Once the water is hot enough, you're going to pour it into your bowl. And then you're going to pour in two packets of yeast. I have two here, they're just connected. I'm going to pour them in the water. Right, and then we're going to stir until all the yeast is dissolved. You'll know that the yeast is activating and your water was at a good temperature if it's really cloudy and the yeast is a little bit foamy on top. The next step is to add your sugar, salt, three cups of flour, and then your vegetable oil. When measuring sugar, you can just take your measuring cup, stick it in your bag or container, level it off by shaking it gently, and then just pour it on in. And then do the same thing with the vegetable oil, but always pour over the counter instead of over your bowl, just in case you spill. And then you can pour this in there too. The flour is a little bit trickier, so we're going to get a nice close-up so that everybody knows how to properly pour flour. To properly measure flour, take a spoon and gently spoon the flour into your measuring cup. Make this make sure that you don't get any air bubbles and that you're getting the correct amount of flour. Once it's full, you can go ahead, just making sure I don't spill too much on my counter, and just dump it into your bowl. Now just repeat this two more times. Now comes the fun part. We get to use our hands and get a little dirty. With your one remaining cup of flour, gradually add it while kneading the dough. So I'm only going to add about a third of the cup and then I'm going to use my hands or my fork if you want to use the fork a little bit more and gradually stir in the rest of this whole cup of flour.
And this is what kneading looks like with a little bit of a close up for you. Gently grab the bottom, fold it up, push down. Grab the bottom, fold it up, push down. I'm gonna add some more flour and then keep repeating the process. making sure all the flour gets worked in. Now that we're just finishing up kneading the dough, all the flour, the rest of the cup is used up, it's almost time to let it sit and rest for 30 minutes. The last step for preparing the dough is to set a towel on top of the bowl and then move the bowl to a warm spot so it can continue to rise for 30 minutes. Lightly flour your workspace so that the dough doesn't stick to the counter. And then take your dough and place it on the counter, dividing it in half though because the other half will be used for our mini pizzas. You're gonna replace the second half in the bowl and save it for later. Then we're going to gently divide this half of the dough into about 12 different pieces. The easiest way to get 12 pieces is to keep on cutting in half. So I'll cut this one using a butter knife into two pieces and then each one needs to get cut into six pieces. So I'll cut this into three equal pieces and then I'll just cut it in half and then repeat for the other side. You can set the extra pieces on the side. And now we get to roll this one into a long rope, which we'll end up repeating with all the other pieces as well. The easiest way is to take your hands like this and have it just roll right up your fingertips. Once you have the rope, about a foot long. You're going to take it and then almost making a heart but connecting it all the way to the bottom sides and then pressing it together down at the bottom, pinching it together and then on the inside. Making your very own pretzel. Here's an up close look at how to roll out the ropes. Pinch them together so that they stick together. Then pinch again on the other side. Pinch in the middle so that it sticks together. And then you can gently pat to remove excess flour. For the egg white, take an egg, crack it, and pour it into your egg yolk separator making sure not to get any yolk into the egg white. Gently tap it to get all the egg white out. Once all your pretzels are made, now's the time where you get to prepare the pan. You can either use non-cooked spray or parchment paper. Simply grab the parchment, Fit it to the size of your pan and gently pull and it should rip right off for you. Sometimes it curls so it might be best to flip it upside down. 
and then fit to the size of your pan. And then you can take each of your pretzels and line them up on the pan. of four on a big cooking sheet. Next, take your egg white and water mixture and then taking a pastry brush, dip it in and gently paint over the top of each pretzel. By doing this, it'll give the pretzels a nice golden brown color when they're done. Once all the pretzels are brushed, now it's time to put them in the oven. Always be careful when opening and closing an oven. Ovens are very hot. Even though the pan isn't hot, it might be a good idea to put on oven mitts anyway. Make sure to set a timer for 12 to 15 minutes, and then make sure we check on them frequently so they don't get too golden brown. Now that the pretzels are done, carefully use a turner to scrape them off the pan and place them on a plate. Just like with the pretzels, make sure we flour our work surface before handling the dough so that it doesn't stick to the counter. Then take the other half of the dough and cut it into four pieces. circles for our pizza. If you have a rolling pin like this at home, feel free to use that. Otherwise, go ahead and just use your hands. Make sure that we press from the inside out instead of the outsides. This will help make an even crust. Just like with the pretzels, we're going to use the same size pan and also line this one with parchment paper so that nothing sticks to the pan. Gently place your pizza dough crusts evenly apart on the pan. Now this part might be a little bit tricky. Using a can opener like this, otherwise you can use an electric can opener if you have one, gently place this on top, hooking the rim of the inside of the can. Squeeze together until you hear a pop, and then simply twist. Once you've hit all the way around, simply open it up, 
and gently push on one side to pop the, the rim open. But be careful, this is very sharp. Before we spread on the pizza sauce, take a fork and gently poke four to five pokes on top of each pizza dough. This will help the pizza dough from making big, large bubbles that ruin the middle or insides of your pizza. Next, take the pizza sauce and a spoon and spread one spoonful all around on each pizza. Once all the pizza sauce is spread on there, take your mozzarella cheese and gently sprinkle two to four tablespoons of cheese on each pizza. Now the pizzas are ready for the oven, but remember, be careful, if you need to, put oven mitts on and always be extra cautious when dealing with a hot oven. Once they're done, pull them out of the oven and then you can serve them by using a flipper and putting them onto your plate. Enjoy!